actually just went back and checked out uh, We Were Soldiers. That's such an incredible film. Oh, thank you, man. Actually, that's uh, that's kind of one closest to my heart because it was kind of my first big budget movie. Mm-hmm. And I was so green and so just happy to be there. And that that role, I felt, was so, like, incredible in right. the sense of just the storyline and, you know, actually playing a real-life human being that actually experienced that and being able to talk to the soldiers and stuff like that. It was unbelievably amazing. It was like everything that you would want and kind of dreamed of as an actor kind of, you know, grinding out and going through the ropes. Mm-hmm. And for that movie to be kind of my first movie was like epic, just epic. Sure. Did you put any, I mean, did you put any research into that? Did you, um, you know, the, it, it's based on a book and I did a lot of like, you know, Vietnam research and, everything like that, but, um, and especially, you know, the, the lead character that Mel Gibson plays, I got a lot of chance to, to talk to him. Mm-hmm. And when I approached this character, you know, for me, I kind of took the responsibility of kind of putting this guy as a hero because that's what he was, mm-hmm. you know, in that sense too. And it's not like I wanted to act like a hero per se, but really kind of tell his story that this guy is a genuine man, right. um, you know, fighting for, for the cause that he believed in. And uh, unfortunately, you know, due to the given circumstances and stuff, um, wasn't able to quite make it. But for me, I think what Randall Wallace did with, with that character and how he kind of approached it through the movie um, was one of the most amazing things that I've ever been involved with. You know, because it really, as little as I am, I want to say, like in blips of the movie, you really kind of, tell his story in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like his passing is such, like, so heart-wrenching that it really kind of pulls weight, you know, with the epic movie that it is. Sure. Yeah, I mean, so when you're working on it, did you, I mean, for me, it's got this really great, almost, you know, 50s war vibe going on with it. It reminds me of, uh, I'm not sure, are you familiar with, like, Sam Fuller movies? No, unfortunately I'm not. What, what what is what is well Sam Fuller was a he was a, a filmmaker in the 40s and 50s and 60s and he 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 was like his life was sort of defined by his World War II experiences and he always told really gritty stories that looked at both sides of you know the coin in the sense that he made right. like for, there's that great line in um in We Were Soldiers where Mel Gibson talks about fixed bayonets and that was a yes. uh, that was a Sam Fuller movie called Fixed Bayonets. Oh, I really see. gritty stuff from the fifties that sort of looked at you know both sides of the coin in terms of war. Um, right. And on that note, I mean, you know, so why do you think you know Americans, our culture is is so fascinated all these years later by Vietnam? Wow, that's a good. I I think the fascination with Vietnam was because it was such a time of turmoil. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think it it dissimilar um, to World War II where everyone was just like, you know, let's go to war. We're going to sign up and all this other stuff. It almost right. had the opposite effect with the Vietnam War. Sure. Um, and I think that's what so, is so intriguing because there's this constant debate about whether we should be in war and whether we shouldn't. And why today I think Vietnam kind of is similar to what we're kind of going through today. You know, why we should be in war or we shouldn't be in war in, in, that, in, in those accounts as well, you know, because I think um, it's not like World War II, where it was almost like a clear-cut, no questions asked decision to go to war and the reasons right. why and all this other stuff, whereas these past wars and in Vietnam, there wasn't that, you know. Mm-hmm. There was always um, a, a conflict of interests and, um, you know, a, a lot of turmoil within the United States about going to war and not. So, yeah, I think that's why it may hold kind of just a fascination or not necessarily maybe even also, you know, kind of historically kind of learn from our past and stuff like that into the present. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's interesting. So tell me about, tell me about, you know, because I did some some reading on your, you looked at your bio and stuff. And, you know, I like to talk to actors about, you know, what are some of the films they saw growing up and how they influenced them. So I wanted to right. to ask you about that. You know, what's funny is one of my first films that influenced me was Back to the Future. Nice. Um, and the reason why I say that is because 
Back to the Future, if you remember the movie, there's this Twin Pines Mall. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they actually shot the Twin Pines Mall where I grew up in Hassan the Heights. Sure. So the Twin Pines Mall was basically the Puente Hills Mall of what I knew when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was done in, in 84, 85 or whatever, and I was 7 or 8. And I remember going to the Twin Pines Mall and kind of like seeing what they're doing seeing the cool cameras and the lights and the C-stands and this huge kind of production going on. Right. And I was, like, fascinated as a boy. Mm-hmm. Like, what is this stuff? Um, and then kind of either consciously or subconsciously wanted to get into the business, though I was more groomed to be, you know, at growing up in an Asian family, it's, you know, a doctor or a lawyer. My brother, you know, is a doctor. So, you know, I was kind of groomed to be a lawyer since sure. I was a boy and all this other stuff. Um, and just didn't go that route. And I think instinctually, um, once I kind of caught the bug in college, I kind of knew that, you know, I'll go down this path. Um, complete tangent from the movies that I kind of grew up with. But they were the kind of fun 80s movies, to be completely honest. Sure. You know, they were the... Um, you know, the say anything and the weird sciences. And there's this kind of indie movie called North Shore that I love. Oh, man, I love North Shore. Those kind of movies that were fun, you know, you totally, totally full on relatable. Um, that kind of, for me, kind of stands the test of time, mm-hmm. you know, with the themes and, and the messages and stuff like that, too. And that just kind of intrigued me. Um, and, you know, the characters that were created within these films, I can actually relate to, you know, as I was growing up, you know, and that's pretty much something that I, that influenced me and wanted to be a part of. And then, you know, once I got into college and the study of it, you know, you, you, you do talk about the greats and you watch the greats um, in time. And, you know, you have like, you know, of course, the godfathers of the world, but even further back than that, and, you know, um, Streetcar, Name Desire, and all yep. this other stuff. So, sure. you know, it, it started from the fun influences of growing up, you know, like the Star Wars and even the Gremlins and all this other stuff, and just enjoying movies, period. And then catching the bug to act because it was a part of me subconsciously, to be honest. Right. And then going back and like really delving into like the history of movie and cinema and filmmaking and the greats and, and kind of learning from there. Sure. Awesome. Awesome. So tell me about uh so tell me about Mortal Kombat, man. Yeah, Mortal Kombat is was one of the funnest, coolest experiences that I've had. Um, you know, as a kid again, I, I grew up playing Mortal Kombat. Um but what the funny thing is, is when I was offered the role of Liu Kang, I kind of like, kind of said, no, man, I, I'm the last guy that you want to play Liu Kang. Like, I was kind of anti-Liu Kang, because growing up, I never played him. I always thought he was kind of this, almost like a caricature of Bruce Lee. Yeah, exactly. You know, almost right. like a wannabe, per se, and I was always, like, about, like, the dark characters, like the Sub-Zeros and the Scorpions and all that other stuff. Um but, you know, a buddy of mine who's uh, playing actually Scorpion in both the trailer season one and season two, Ian Anthony Dale, a dear, dear friend, and said, dude, no, read the script. You have to do this. And so I read it, and it completely blew my mind. They completely flipped Liu Kang on its head, and, it, and it's, you know, it's, it's dark, but yet you understand why he's kind of going through his journey and kind of riding the line between both earth realm and outworld. And those are kind of the two worlds that are kind of clashing together. Um, You know, and you, you, there's so much depth and and characterization and and the reasons why that, you know, I was just like, wow, I got to be a part of it. And then after talking to Kevin Tantron, who's completely taken this, this Mortal Kombat series to a whole new level, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just had to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. it's so I I really love how uh, it's you know for lack of a better description, is almost like Jedi like you know he's almost like Skywalker Jedi like in Return of the Jedi with the hood and and too bad Luke never picked up a flask, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, pretty much so. Though, though maybe he did, you know. Yeah. Between the between the lines and stuff sure. like that too. When I, when, when yeah. I was when I was a kid, I got I was guilty of when I played Mortal Kombat. I was guilty of sweeping the leg too much. Is that something you ever did? <laughs> right. Always. <laughs> Always. The faster you can sweep the leg, 
no, you right. know what I mean? I would have an entire so. fight just sweeping the leg. <laughs> <laughs> that was the out, man. Definitely. That's right. That's you right. have no other move. Sweep the leg, you win. <laughs> so, so, so for Liu Kang, I mean, so how do you, um, you know, how do you bring, how do you decide to bring him to life? You read the script. So where's that, where's that darkness come from inside you? What's funny is, you know, I've, I've played darker, um, you know, quote unquote, bad guy characters in the past and stuff like that. But I think each character is different. And when I approach a certain dark character, I don't necessarily say, well, I'm just going to be a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think the character itself doesn't necessarily reasons. Um, and that's how I kind of approached Liu Kang, um, especially after reading the script and where we wanted to take it. With Liu, um, we kind of stripped down his image Mm-hmm. you know, of what everyone kind of seen and kind of started from the ground up and really started from his backstory into why he was this. And yes, he's a shaman monk and all this other stuff. But when you watch the series, you come to know in our story, you know, things that happened that made him turn. Sure. And, you know, the, the things that happen in our own personal life, you know, can change us, you know, through our journey and the ways that we think or the passions that we have or you know, any and all kind of reasoning can kind of go out the window if some kind of tragedy happens. And that's what happened with Lou. Um, so when approaching this, you know, I just kind of connected with that, kind of humanized Lou, you know, didn't make him some iconic figure that he is, but just made him more real and more human and kind of brought in a lot of myself into the story. Mm-hmm. But then also, like, the things that he experienced, you know, I just, what I really want, truly want to do would just make him someone that audience can say, yeah, like, that guy's a real guy. He's he's relatable, and I understand. I mean, not agree, but I understand. Cool. Um, and that's kind of the approach that I want to take him. Interesting. And, you, I mean, not to, you know, exceed this stereotype, but do you ever, I mean, uh, do you... I mean, do any of the guys on the show ever looked for inspiration from Bruce Lee or anything like that? Well, I think, to be honest, whether they admit it or not, I think everyone takes inspiration from Bruce Lee. Sure. Um, especially being an Asian and Asian American in that sense, too. Only sure. because, you know, he was one of the first to go the farthest. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's unfortunate his life was cut short. Mm-hmm. But he is kind of the... Uh, what do I call it? Kind of, not in the sense of the godfather of us in the sense, but, you know, he kind of, he was, he paved the way, you know, for people to really take a look at Asians for sure, in sure. cinema um, on a level that, you know, was like groundbreaking, mm-hmm. you know. I know a lot have done it in the past, but I don't think to the extent and legacy that he did, sure. you know. So, the inspiration from him, you know, obviously in martial arts, he's like the baddest of all badasses. Right. Um, so it's like no one could touch him. And of course, in Mortal Kombat, it's it's a martial arts type uh, movie and game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that inspiration, I think, um, definitely goes hand in hand. But I think just him as an artist, as an actor, as an individual, as an icon, um, I think we all, for me, um, subconsciously looked at him and, and kind of, you know, use what he, the paths that he, he has actually taken and kind of followed along his footsteps in our own little way. Sure. So, yeah, I think his influence purely on a whole universal level with everything that we're doing, not just Mortal Kombat, but I think universally, yeah. um, he has kind of, you know, his thumbprint on it. Yeah. And did have you ever taken any inspiration from Bruce Leroy from The Last Dragon? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes I do. Right. You know, Absolutely. you know just as well as I do that you and I probably both wanted to have the glow. Oh, I, totally, <laughs> totally, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, to to be honest, I mean, I I I love that movie. Me too. I really do. It was just, you know, it was so one of those rich, kind of character driven. You know, didn't take it too seriously, but they did take it seriously. You know, and the time that I saw it, I was just, I was just with it, and I was just in it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's funny. It's like it, 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 cool. and it also sort of iconographizes Bruce Lee too, right? So the way they look at Bruce cool. Lee is pretty incredible too in that movie. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think 
what it what it did was kind of 